most popular whipping show in the world. 28 million viewers a season. Uh, secondly, he's the star of Flipping 101 on HGTV, and uh, he's, he's an all-around really good guy, and I wanted to bring him in and, and talk to you guys about his story. It's very impactful. I think you guys can relate to it. The highs, the lows, cancer, kids, divorces, and <laughs> ultimate success. So it, it's really inspiring, and, and I'm really, uh, really happy to have you here today, Tarek. Yeah, happy to be here, guys. Technology. <laughs> That's right, that's right. There we go, there we go. Okay, so Tarek, to begin, uh, tell us about the beginning of your real estate career, about Cutco, and you didn't, you weren't hired at IHOP, and you were driving your Buick Park Avenue. <laughs> oh, so you want me to go back to the early days? Oh, please, please. All right, so this, this I think it was 2002, Late 2002, I was pretty much fresh out of high school. I was 19, almost 20 years old. And at the time, I was delivering pizza for Papa John's Pizza, and I was selling kitchen knives for Cutco. Anyone have Cutco knives? <laughs> Everybody, everybody's got Cutco knives. I probably sold them to you. I'm just kidding. So I was actually selling Cutco knives. I was one of the top reps in the nation, and I was a young kid, and I had every single lead in a folder. And what happened was I lost my folder. So now imagine you've lost your entire lead database, everything I had for that business. And I found myself in a position where I didn't know what to do. So I was at a Washington Mutual ATM in Cerritos, California. Um, I'm looking at my account. The balance is like almost zero. And I had a, what I like to call a defining moment, right? A defining moment is a moment in your life that changes the trajectory of your life. So I'm standing at this ATM machine. I'm thinking, man, what am I going to do now? I'm broke. I have no money. I lost my sales book. I looked up to the right and there was a crooked sign. It said, wise old owl real estate school. So I had a moment, you know, I, was, I thought to myself, if I could sell these kitchen knives, I could sell houses. So I emptied my ATM. I walked over there and I signed up for real estate classes. And that's how I got into real estate. And once I got my license, you guys might relate to this, right? So now I'm 20 years old. My first office was in Coldwell Banker in Fullerton, California. And my first six months in the business, I was young. I was hungry. I was motivated. I was so excited. And I completely struck out. My first six months in the business, I made no money. I was a kid. I was so upset. Um, I was driving around in a 1985 Buick Park Avenue I went home, I told my parents, I was like, man, this real estate stuff, I don't think it's for me. You know, I think maybe I should go to school like my mom wanted. My dad told me, you got to keep going. My dad's always been my biggest coach. Quitting is never an option. You got to keep going. So I was in my office and I heard these ladies talking about um, real estate coaching. And they were talking about this coach named Mike Ferry. Everybody knows Mike Ferry. Talking about this coach named Mike Ferry that was coming to the area. And I was 20 years old. I was like, coach, what do you mean, coach? And then they're like, well, yeah, you could pay people to teach you what to do. And I was like, well, wait a minute. You're telling me I could pay someone to teach me and then I can make money. So I ended up going to this free event. And this speaker, Mike Fair, he's the most incredible speaker I've ever heard. I'm still like, I'm still like so inspired by this guy. Uh, but he convinced me I could do anything. He convinced me I was unstoppable. He convinced me I was going to be the best agent in the world. He convinced me I was going to make more money than I ever thought possible. So I signed up for real estate coaching. And actually, at the end of that first event, I handed, it, handed him a piece of paper saying, you don't know who I am today, but one day you will know who I am. And guess what? He knows who I am now. So, <laughs> sign up, yeah. so signed up for coaching. And, and it was at a time when I had no money. I was 20. I just broke up with my girlfriend. I had to move back to my mom's house. My parents just got divorced. So she rented out my bedroom and I moved into my mom's garage and it wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't a converted garage. It was like the garage you, at your house. Like I would come home, I'd hit the clicker, the garage door would open, the cockroaches would run out and, and there were so many spiders in there. It was awful. So, so I'm living in this garage, signed up for coaching. And I said, man, I got, I got to do whatever my coach says. So I promised myself I was going to give it I was going to give it 90 more days in real estate. I was going to work 6 days a week, 12 to 14 hours a day for 90 days. And if I failed after 90 days, I was going to go back to school. Here's what happened. 
signed up for coaching. I started going after expired listings, just expired listings. That's all I did. And then I did some for sale by owner. And with real estate, I always say you can make life-changing money really fast. So 20 years old, broke kid in the garage to 90 days later, only three months later, I ended up earning $120,000 in real estate commissions right around my 21st birthday. At that same time, right when I made that money, one of my listings, the seller asked me if I wanted to buy it. I was like, well, if I can get a loan, I'll buy it. And guess what? I was able to get a loan. <laughs> this was 2004. Anybody could get a loan. So I'm living in this garage completely broke. 90 days later, I made $120,000 and I bought a million dollar home right around my 21st birthday. So the beginning of my, my career was really, really exciting. Um, and then from there, do you, you guys remember 2007, 8, 9? Well, I do. 2007, 8, 9 came and I lost pretty much everything. Not pretty much. We're good. <laughs> you guys liking this so far? Yeah. yeah. It's interesting, right? All right. So, yeah, yeah. So I was like, man, what do I do now? So, and then I started going after short sales. And um, in 2010, I, I decided I want to become a house flipper. And I know nothing about house flipping. And I decided I wanted to become a house flipper just because as an agent, I saw investors and, and I was realizing, well, wow, the agent has to find the deal and negotiate the deal, work with the banks and the investor just has to buy it. <laughs> So I was like, I need to be an investor. So I pitched everybody I knew um, and everybody said, no. Oh, who would have thought? You're too young. You have no experience. You don't know what you're doing. It's not going to work. You're going to fail, blah, blah, blah. All the same crap we always hear. Uh, luckily for me, I just don't pay attention to other people. So, you know, of course, I just kept moving forward. And I convinced someone to buy a, 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 my first flip with me. His name was Pete DeBest. And he's actually still my business partner today. We've done almost 600 flips together. We own over 110 rental properties together. Um, but this is way back 2010. So right when I bought my first flip, I went to another Mike Ferry real estate convention in Las Vegas. And guess what? It was in Las Vegas, which means I went out and I had a lot of fun. <laughs> so I go to the Mike Ferry event and I'm sitting in the very back row. And two seats opened up at the front row of the superstar retreat. And my, my friend was a manager for uh, Cobo Banker. His name's Brad Pearson. He invited me and my ex to go sit in the very front row. So because we were sitting in the front row, that's where all the ballers were. That's where all the big agents were. So we didn't belong there. So everybody was looking. Can you, can you, guys, can you guys hear me? Yeah, keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> oh, you can hear me. Okay, where was I here? Okay, so... I'm in, so I'm in Las Vegas at the Superstar Retreat. This guy tells me he has a local TV show in Palm Springs about real estate. So then I get this crazy idea to get on TV. Um, and I went home after the, the, the convention. I told my ex, I was like, hey, I need to get us on TV. And she's like, what the heck are you going to get us on TV for? And I was like, well, I don't know. I just got to get us on TV. So I was sitting there and I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking. And then it hit me. I'm like, well, I just bought my very first flip. What if I flipped houses on TV? So that was the, that was the moment the idea was born to flip houses on TV, but I did it backwards because I pitched a house flipping show before I ever flipped a house. So I contacted production That's companies. Amazing, right? <laughs> I contacted production companies. They responded. I sent them the home video. They loved it. And then we did a two day professional shoot, which is a sizzle. The network loved that. Then we went to what's called a pilot, which is a single episode. No, keep yeah, going. Yeah. It's great. We love it. <laughs> All right. Let me think. Where was I with my story here? Uh, pilot. Oh, okay. pilot. So, then, so then HGTV, they get the pilot. They love it. They call me Tark. We love it. We're going to do a, a, a 13 episodes of a show called Flipper Flop. And of course, I should be really excited, right? <laughs> here was the problem. They wanted me, the 20 something. So I, I had no idea how I was going to do it. So I looked at my ex and I was like, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? Um, well, the worst thing that can happen is they can sue us for not fulfilling the contract. And I looked around at everything that I was upside down on my finance couch, my finance chair. And I was like, you know what? They can have it. So I signed the contract. And <laughs> So I, I signed the contract and for, for that first year, I just put my head down. I worked 14 to 18 hours a day and I figured out how to become a house flipper while filming a TV show about flipping houses. 
And that first year we did that 13 houses. And then going into season two, um, one of my viewers was in, uh, was in Texas and she was watching my show and she saw a lump on my neck. She sent a message to the production company who then sent it to me. She was a nurse out of Texas said, Hey, something looks wrong on your neck. You should get it checked out. So I went and got it checked out and it turned out that I did in fact have thyroid cancer. So season two of TV, I find out I have thyroid cancer and like a month later through further testing, they also find out that I had testicular cancer. Um, so that was, that was a point in my life where I, I didn't think I was going to make it. I was a young father and I'll never forget. Um, I got the call from the network and they were understanding of the situation and they were ready to, you know, cancel the show. And I said, I'm not slowing down. I'm not canceling the show. And I literally filmed until I was being rolled into my surgery. And you know what? I kept fighting. I never quit. And because of that, we have 10 seasons of the most popular house flipping show of all time, Flipper Flop. Yeah. Yeah, Taurus, you know, we have a lot of agents and affiliates and people related to real estate in, in the audience. Can you give us some pointers? You know, obviously you've been through a lot of ups and downs. It's been a roller coaster ride. What are some things that got you through the hard times? Oh man, hope. <laughs> you know, I just it's hope. You know, I'm a believer that anything's possible. And the only way if you outwork everybody, if you put in the work, you're going to get results. I don't care if it's work. I don't care if it's diet. I don't care if it's going to the gym. If you put in the work, you're going to get results. Is there anything else you want to add before we go to a Q and a for you? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I, I love real estate. I think real estate investment investing is the best business in the world. Real estate sales is an incredible business as well. So I'm just a real estate guy that loves real estate. Does anyone have any questions for Tarek? I'll, I'll run the mic to you. Do you have a question, Penny? Hi, Tarek. In the Phoenix Scottsdale area, uh, our sales are you know, through the roof for what we can find. Is it still a good time to do a flip? Oh, it's always a good time to do a flip. It just depends on what you pay for the property. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what market, what market we're in. It all comes down to the math. So it depends on what you pay for the house. Hey, Tar. Um, so I'm in the finance business. Where do you get your finances for a lot of these fix and flips? Oh, well, that's a good uh, question. For the, well, the fix and flips, uh, we work with a company called uh, Lending Home and we work with a company called Genesis. Uh, but I'm in the process of launching my own lending company now. <laughs> nice. Exactly. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I used to be a nurse and I was just curious, do you still keep in contact with the nurse who found your lump and contacted the production company? Just curious. You know, you know it, it's actually been a while since we chatted, um, but I have met her in person. We brought her out to LA. I took her to dinner um, and she's just an incredible person. That's great. Good morning. Can you describe what the typical day looks like for you? <laughs> I wish I wish I knew. <laughs> like every every day is different, you know, with the two different shows and so many different companies. But you know, on a typical day, I like to start my day with a workout in the morning, typically, you know, seven or eight o'clock. And then from there, I'm just running all day. If I have the kids that night, I run until I get to the kids and then I stop. If I don't have the kids, I run until I'm out of gas. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Right up here, Amanda. Tarek, you've done an incredible job and you make flipping look very easy, but we all know that uh, drama is the worst thing to happen in a flip, but it makes good TV. Um, I happen to be the pub former publisher of Personal Real Estate Investor Magazine and ended up building all the software for a number of the SFRs who did flips and there's just so many variables. How do you manage? Delegating tasks and speed. You gotta move fast at everything you do. So, you know, you have to have different departments handling different things in order to get a smooth transaction. And it's really just moving fast, being on top of things and making sure everybody does their job. Right here. Hi, um, my question to you is in this day and age, we have difficulty getting back to the job. 
So do you have your own team that you use over and over again so you don't have to worry about contractors not showing up to do the job and getting the materials you need and so forth? Yeah, so I work with three or four different construction companies that run all the projects. So, you know, typically we'll have each contractor running a few jobs. Anyone else? Sorry, Michael, the questions are breaking here. up a little bit. So I'm, ha I'm having a hard here. time here. Raise your hand. If you had a question. Good morning, Tari. So if somebody wanted to get started flipping homes, what are two or three great ways to get into that and evaluate if even that property is worth investing in and flipping? That's a, that's a great question. You know what the great thing about being a real estate agent, if you want to be a real estate investor, in my opinion, you're halfway there. You know how to analyze properties. You know how to run CMAs. You know how to list property. Like, you know, half of the work, right? So the most important, <laughs> the most important part of this business is getting educated, right? You, you have to understand the process. You have to understand how to estimate construction. You have to understand how to find ARV. So getting educated is super important. I actually have an online real estate school called Homeschooled by Tarek El Moussa, um, where we actually teach people how to invest in real estate and how to flip houses. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Okay. I have a question. You obviously have a lot of passion for what you do, but what drives you to, to keep going? Your biggest driver. Oh, I heard that. My biggest, my biggest driver is my family and my goals. You know, I just, I know, I don't want to leave this planet without doing something special. That's, that's what drives me. And, and I, and I feel like there's so much opportunity out there and I want to do it for myself. I want to do it for my family. And I just, I, and honestly, I want to show the world that anything's possible. Right here, over here. Hi, good morning. What do you do about um, lumber and other materials that are backlogged right now? Uh, pay more money. <laughs> <laughs> Just How pay far more out money. are you on construction? <laughs> what, what's that? How far out are you on construction? Uh, um, what, what do you mean by that? Turnaround time, like if it's nine months, 12 months. Oh, gosh. It's been so, so different, especially with COVID, you know, I would say on average, it's we're probably around five months right now. Everything's much slower. Right up here. So since you started in California and the market's always kind of going up, Arizona is not used to where we are right now. And we've gone up so quick that every buyer is like, are we going to crash? What's going to happen? I know it's going to crash. And I just keep saying, well, look at California. California didn't really crash, right? What do you tell your buyers when they're so afraid it's going to crash? Well, I mean, well, last time California really, really crashed. So, you know, <laughs> like it really crashed. So that was in 2000, you know, seven, eight, nine. But, you know, Besides. what's that? Besides that one crash. <laughs> Besides that one crash. You know, it's like anything. There, there's no crystal ball, but there's one thing I'm I'm 100% confident of. Whatever's bought today, whether it goes up or down 10, 15 years from now, I'm pretty sure it's going to be worth more. Does anyone else have anything? We got a couple more minutes with him. Oh, one more. Okay. Good morning, Tar. Hey, um, when you're doing flips, what do you estimate is going to be like your hold time, or how do you estimate your hold times on your flips? Yeah, sure. So it just depends on the size of the project, right? So a smaller project. I might estimate, you know, four to six months, a medium sized project, maybe six to seven months. And then you got a larger project, maybe additions anywhere from seven months to a year. Frank Good morning. Uh, so not all of them are winners. What do you, how do you reposition one that is a mistake? How do you turn that into a sell or a win? With a uh, you don't. You just average it out with the losses. So I probably lose 5% out of the time, maybe one on 20 houses. And typically when I lose on a house going into that deal, I know it's a higher risk deal. It's not like I thought I was going to have a home run and then I lost money. So when I lose on deals, I know they're riskier. But if I win on 19 and lose on one, if you average it out, I'm still winning. Oh, one more question. <laughs> yeah, Buzz is talky. <laughs> what kind of margins do you normally work on a flip? 
You broke that. You broke up one more time. It was what kind of margins do you normally um, work with on a flip? You know, we, you know, typically look for you know a ten to twelve percent net return um, and roll that a couple of times a year. That's that's the goal. Oh, we got one more. Okay. Since it seems like we're through with the business questions, what are you driving? What's in your garage? Well, do you want to know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you do. All right. Well, we got a we have a fun Tesla. I got Heather a nice Ferrari Portofino convertible. On our first date, she told me her dream car was a white Ferrari. So on our third date, I bought her a Ferrari. <laughs> you, hear, you hear that? I said third thing she got a Ferrari. <laughs> so yeah, that's why she said I do, by the way. <laughs> Another investment. <laughs> that's an investment, all right. <laughs> all right, anyone else? <laughs> Can you guys give him a big round of applause? Yeah. Hey, yeah th thanks for having me, guys. And listen, I, I love Arizona. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, that we just opened up a new company. The headquarters are actually in Scottsdale, uh, TEM Investments. We're buying value-add apartments across the country, and we're actually primarily focused in the Phoenix area. So that's what the TEM Investments is. So I love Arizona. So you guys might be seeing me there more often. Yeah, we love to. Thanks, Thank you.